Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. This is the third video in the KQL Intermediate series. In the last session, we introduced summarized the count, min, max, and make set functions. In this session, we'll continue our focus on summarize while introducing bin, decount, average, and count if functions. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In previous sessions, we introduced distinct. And in the last session, we introduced the use of summarize to add as an enrichment tool to the concept of distinct. Oftentimes we have high volumes of records for each event type, and we just want to see a high level summary of what occurred in a particular time frame. As an example, when we look at connection logs for VMs, we see many records for VM events. As we look at this data, it's hard to make sense of the trends at a high level. One option is to place groups of events into time buckets and then perform math on each bucket to identify the average, earliest, or latest values. Here we see many records for one machine. Instead of having the times reflect the precise seconds, we can simply have one record that represents one minute blocks. To do this, we can use bin. When we use bin, we should pass in two arguments within the parentheses. The first is the field that we want to make buckets out of, and the second is the time frame in which each bucket should represent. In this case, we're saying we want to make buckets out of the time generated field, and each bucket should represent one minute worth of records. What would happen if we change the bucket size from one minute to one hour? When we look at the time generated field, we see that the minutes and seconds are no longer present as the bucket size is increased to hourly. Let's try a second example of making bin buckets. In this case, we're looking at sign in logs table and we're filtering for only guest accounts. So let's break that down at an hourly level. We could also search logs for the last month, then break the numbers down at a daily level. Depending on how long our logs are stored, which is commonly referred to as the retention period, we could zoom out additional layers to look at guest logins by month over the last year. We can even begin to layer in additional fields of interest, such as by country, by device, by individual, or by domain. This is one way to look for anomalies. We can also pair this data with alerting data to see spikes and trends. In this example, we'll take the minimum and maximum bytes sent values from the VM connection table for every hour. We'll also introduce an average number of bytes sent per hour, plus the total number of records containing bytes sent each hour. Keep in mind that the count field is not the sum of the bytes sent, but it's a count of how many records occurred within the hour bin bucket. You can see that every time we add an additional function to the left of by on the summarized line, it adds an extra field. Let's add a new function called count if. When we use count if, there's a condition that we set. If the condition is met, it will provide a count. In this case, let's count the number of records where minimum bytes sent are greater than zero. You can now see in the count column how many total records there were per hour. And in the count if column, how many records there were per hour with a minimum byte sent of greater than zero. Now let's change some of the column names to add some clarity.
What if we want to find the total number of bytes in each hourly bucket? We can use the sum function. We'll also give the field a presentable name that makes sense. You can see there's a lot we can do with Summarize, and there are many functions we can use to get information presented to us in a useful way. Let's try another practical exercise using Summarize. Let's take a sample of the security event table. We can see that it lists the timestamp, computer, and the activity that was recorded as a security event. We want to understand what security events occurred on each machine in the last 24 hours. And we want to enrich that information to give us more context. Think for a moment how you would solve this problem using Summarize. When we're building queries, if we aren't quite sure of the outcome, we can build the query incrementally and add to our results in the same way that we would if we add additional where statements to narrow down our results. We know that we want to see security events for each computer, so let's start there by making a set of security events for each computer and see what we get back. We can see how many computers had security events in the last 24 hours. And for each computer, a set of unique security events was created. This could be useful for us, but we can see each set goes off the screen to the right. Do you know how we can see a full set of security alerts for the first device? If we click on the arrows, we can see the set vertically, which is easier to read. Let's find the count of security events for each computer. How can we do that? Now let's focus our security search and filter our query down to just one type of security event. 4799 shows when a security-enabled local group membership was enumerated. We just want to see when that event occurred on all computers in the last 24 hours. How could we change the query? We can see that make set only produced one result since we filter our query to only one activity option. We also see that this security event is pretty noisy in our environment and likely nothing to be alarmed about. Now we want to make one last change to this query. We want to see how many 4799 security events occurred by computer every hour for the last 24 hours. How could we accomplish this? If the concepts of summarizations or understanding whether to place a field to the left or the right side of by are confusing, review this lesson again, then try the homework assignment for practice. As you probably noticed, if we're only looking at large grouping of numbers, it can be challenging to look for anomalies and trends in the data. In the next session, we'll take our summarizations and transfer them into visual representations so we can easily look for anomalies and trends. For this week's homework assignment, we'll use the LA Demo Workspace. If you need access to this free data set, you can find instructions in Lesson 7 of the Beginner Series. In the App Events table, identify how many people from unique states and countries clicked My Profile button from each hour for the last 24 hours. The name field can be used as one of the key reference fields. Paste your answers in the comment section to learn with and help others. That's all for today's session. In the next session, we'll focus on making charts and graphs. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.